It is Tuesday morning, which means that it is Mailbag Monday on a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> you got it, sir. How are you doing? It is Tuesday morning, but obviously we need to release this a little later. We don't. Yeah, do by the time so. anybody sees this, it'll be the afternoon. I'm sure yeah. most people in Canada live in Toronto, so or at least that's what they'd have you believe. So, <laughs> <laughs> hello to everybody in Toronto. Um, Welcome. Welcome to the walk off, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to comb through all of your comments, questions, all of the interaction we've had over the last week and kind of get to as many of those as we can. We do do this every single Tuesday. So if you would like to have your voice heard, feel free to join the discord. You can do so by going into the show notes and just clicking on the link there. That's nice and easy for you. You can uh, reach out on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast, on Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast, or you can drop your comments in YouTube, which we would appreciate you even doing both if you wanted, you know, for the yeah. algorithm. Not that Help we know anything about algorithm. algorithms, but... Yeah. <laughs> it all it all seems to sound right coming out of your mouth. It he I hear yes. it, and it sounds like what other YouTubers do, and look at us go. Podcasting, right. YouTubing, doing it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right of course you can get the audio side of our podcast on wherever you get your podcast platforms we always appreciate the subscribe button if you hit it on the audio side of course we appreciate that on the youtube side as well uh a big shout out to our patreon thank you so much for the support we truly appreciate it i, know I have a list of a names here let's let's run down the list of names so we did get a new patreon uh supporter this morning so that's exciting uh, we've got Ian, Jeremy, Joshua, Joel, Rashid, Simon, and our newest Patreon, John. So, hey, thank welcome you to the Patreon. Thank you so much. Um, funnily enough, just because like first names always stand out to me, I would say twenty percent of our YouTube comments come from someone named Scott or Adam. Right? <laughs> it is not us. I swear. Um, and then of our Patreon, Josh and Jer, I have a brother Josh and I have a brother Jer, but as far as I know, look at that. neither of them care enough to give me $4 a month. So, <laughs> well, $2 because I got to split it with you. So, <laughs> all right. Um, let's, uh, let's dive into the mailbag then, shall we? So first one comes in from Steve Williams on YouTube says, Scott and Adam, are you a fan of Charlie Montoyo? You know what? I'll be honest. I was on the fence about Charlie for the last couple of years. He wasn't my choice when they first hired him. Mm -hmm. He didn't really do anything to make me dislike him. There were choices that he made that maybe I wasn't thrilled with at times, but I think you can kind of say that about any manager. Yep. He's growing on me, man. I truly view Charlie as a guy who, even at whatever his age is, you know, mm -hmm. 55, 60, sure. that he's still striving to learn the game, to figure out what he's doing, to grow as a manager and there's something about that that's just very appealing you know to to see a guy at that age still strive to get better and and he has gotten better and we've talked about this when it comes to ball players experience is everything mm -hmm. right you don't just get good at something overnight that's not how it works so yeah to ten thousand hours right that's the thing exactly. ten thousand hours so and so now charlie's in year three He's been with these guys all along. I am happy with Charlie Montoyo at this point. He's done some things this year that we haven't seen before that I quite like. He's he's really managed the pitching and the bullpen incredibly well, in my opinion. And on top of that, I loved watching him flip out. I loved yes. watching him get a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, if you will, that we maybe didn't see over the last few years. Yeah, so we, we dove into this uh, in depth on Long Toss on Sunday. Uh, for anybody that's new here, we do a two-hour roundtable with other content creators every Sunday night, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. Scott, you missed that show this week. I did. Um, we talked about Charlie Montoyo, and it was brought up all the new shift emphasis that is being 
played by the Toronto Blue Jays this year. The extra base running aggressiveness that seems yes. to be really emphasized this year. Uh, um, I guess how much of that credit goes to Charlie Montoyo, right? Is that it? Is that his strategy? Is that him saying, "Look, we're going to shift more," or is that just the analytics department, right? Like we've talked about this before when we were kind of cutting him some slack on some of the decisions last year, it was like, well, it's, he's kind of just the front man or maybe he's just the puppet and this is all up to the analytics department. So how much credit does, do you think he gets for implementing the new emphasis on shift? Is this a good a good so shift I, in the Charlie Montoyo era? I mean, this organization has a, a word they use all the time and that's collaboration. Yeah. Do I think Charlie Montoyo is out there making these decisions on his own? No, I don't. I, I think that the analytics team, I think that the front office, I think that the coaching staff all sat down together and kind of came up with a season plan, if you will, and things that maybe they're going to try to implement and, and really focus on. So I do think that this was more of a, a collaborative decision. However, when you're in game and things are happening – and decisions are needing to be made and adjustments are needing to be made. Yeah. I think that absolutely is Charlie Montoya. So you so you don't think Charlie's looking down at his watch and it says bring in Adam Simber for his league leading fourth win of the year. You don't think he's looking <laughs> down at his watch saying, All right, send him and we're and he's going out there to give the steal sign. You don't think he's looking down at his wristwatch and it's saying, Go yell at the ump. And he's just doing what he's told to yell at the ump. You think this is no really Charlie? <laughs> All right, I like it. What do All you right. think? No, I don't. I don't know how baseball works, man. Like, <laughs> honest to God, I don't. Anybody? I mean, what are we? Six minutes into this podcast, and I'm making a pretty big admission here. Yeah, I mean, played it my whole life. I don't know how it works on like the professional you... back end things. I think anybody really, who claims uh... to know is full of shit. So. I just love that we're two years in here, and now you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All I know, look, is is just like it's. If you were to tell me with 100 percent certainty, like if I go to the pearly gates or whatever the course may be, and God or whoever is like, okay, you get one question, and I'm like, who actually runs the baseball team? <laughs> right? No matter what his answer is, I'm gonna like believe it and also yeah. be shocked. Yes. Like if he's like, no, it's a team of nerds back backstage and they're, I don't know. Yeah. This is a stupid rant I'm going on here. <laughs> Let's, no. Can we just move on? I like Charlie Montoya. He's grown on me. Can I say that? Yeah. Yes. Um, But still a short leash. I mean, I think if the Jays miss the playoffs, he has to be the fall guy, whether it's absolutely his responsibility or, or not. He's going to be the face of any consequences that might fall. So... They did extend his contract. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. He is under, I know that that means nothing, but I mean, he is under contract for another year, which yeah. does show a little bit of faith from the front office, right? Yeah. Well, it shows enough faith to say, look, we don't want you playing with all the questions all year, right? Like, we want you to feel comfortable, but yeah. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so Sam S. says, um, you guys ever think about keeping your live shows available? I missed it tonight. That was in reference to uh, Long Toss on Sunday. Uh, yeah, we re-air it Monday morning. So Sam uh, deleted his comment this morning. So I assume Sam, he or she, uh, figured it out. Figured it out. And uh, yeah, that's that's how we do it. So it is live every Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern for two hours, roughly. And then we re-air it. Uh, Monday morning and you can catch it there so that's uh that's long toss next question comment also regarding long toss um Scott McCutcheon says pretty neat having an Oriole fan perspective in this long format show so we had uh Jack on who runs the uh daily dose of baseball account on TikTok okay. he's got like nice. 20,000 followers over there um he is an Orioles fan but don't hold it against him he, uh, it's all MLB content over there. So it's, uh, it's a fun, he's a young guy. I think he's like 20, but he's yeah. clearly more knowledgeable on baseball than I am. He could probably tell you who's actually making the calls out there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, Jack was a lot of fun. Good talk with him. Um, 
it's I think it's nice to have kind of a neutral perspective when we're talking guys like Boba Shett and Vladdy, right? Like he can bring that outsider neutral fan opinion of a guy, right? The non knee jerk so, reaction, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know. It seemed like every topic on Sunday night devolved into how great is Vlad Jr. Okay. Right? Yeah, like it just Vlad's everything there. became a big high five circle and then having an Orioles fan step in and be like Calm down, guys. But also, you're absolutely right. Vladdy is a beast. So, yes. that felt good. All right. Uh, and then on the uh, long toss Monday morning, uh, we had Joe, who commented like 20 straight comments on long toss, um, which I loved. I'm not going to read them all here, um, but appreciate the uh, enthusiasm and all the comments from joe so where's yes. everybody else slacking off where's our 20 comments <laughs> from each of the scots uh, that's what i want to know um, yeah i then saw the, the one comment i saw the one comment about joe there i forget who it was that mentioned it but they're like uh, joe is single-handedly trying to change your algorithm <laughs> yeah well it worked at least for a day yeah. um but the last two comments from joe were because uh, i i got the feeling like he was enjoying the show was commenting a lot i hadn't seen joe uh in our comment section before but then the last two comments were high baseball knowledge with the eye roll emoji dot 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 and then the next one was see ya dot 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 so i don't know if we lost joe as a fan like if he was like you guys are idiots but that might be the case. I don't know. Either way, he sat through two hours of idiots talking baseball. So who's the real idiot? Right, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next one comes in from... Oh, man. Now I've lost it, Scott. I'm scrambling here. All right. I'm going to read the comment and then I'm going to find the user who posted this. Uh, this is a longer one about our pitching staff. Um, so he says, I feel like the lack of confidence in our rotation is a bit much. Uh, starters across the league struggled to get innings in their first and second starts. It's not unique to the Jays, obviously referring yeah. to Gossman and Barrios and, well, everybody except for Manoa. Uh, but he says, Gossman and Barrios have proven track records. Not sure why Manoa the guy with the least proven track record is given so much confidence in this discussion. Also, why isn't the bullpen sustainable? Is it because it blew up last year? Last year, we started with a crappy bullpen and had a good early run, but soon crumbled uh, once the one or two effective arms got injured. This year, we have a solid core. Unless we have a ton of, well, he said injuries, but I'm going to say bad tacos. Yes. Uh, I can't see this pen just blowing up. One thing I will say, Garcia should get, be getting some save opportunities to help Romano out. He's been lights out early. So do you want to start with the rotation part of that comment? So I obviously missed long toss. Was the uh, confidence in the rotation lacking? Well, I mean, really what it comes down to is we have question marks, right? Like there right. was, we talked catching, right, as a position. Mm -hmm. We talked trading for a replacement arm, which I think is a it's... pretty common. It's not a hot take to say the Blue Jays need to add pitching. I don't think taking Ross Stripling as a fourth starter into the playoffs is a, a good option, right? Um, yes. Yeah, I think we, we have questions still about yeah. Gossman, I, it, I, whether I, he's I a real I... deal or not. I mean... I do I like think... this comment because I, I feel similar to him in that, like, it is still early and we are watching guys get their their feet under them. You know, we saw it with Barrios last night pitching to the eighth inning. Yeah. Looked the best he has since he started the season. We watched Gosman do the same thing last time he pitched, right? Just pitched to an absolute gem. So I think there is something to be said for what he's saying. It's kind of like take a breath and and, and we're, we're sitting okay. Like, let's not panic. Obviously, there's questions. Ryu is a question mark. Can Kikuchi continue to develop and, and figure it out? I mean, obviously, there's question marks, right? Like, okay. And he makes a good point. He makes a good point about Manoa. And I, I mean, we're huge Manoa fans. 
he has 23 starts in the major leagues, right? Yeah. Um, side note, I just want to step in here. This is a hilarious coincidence. Um, when I couldn't find the user's name, I was going to just as a joke say, well, I have a 50-50 chance if I say Scott that I'm probably right. And sure <laughs> enough, Scott. it is Scott. This is actually a new Scott. This is one I haven't seen in our comment section before. This is Scott Moreau. So uh, Scott Moreau, thanks for the comment. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's just funny to me. Um, I, by the way, agree with him on the bullpen. I do think the bullpen... Yeah, is, is sustainable. I do think that there is depth there that will allow for a bad talk or two to slip into the, the... Here's my position on the bullpen, okay? Is we've just leaned on it too much too early. That's why I think it's not sustainable. This bullpen is worn down. They're getting a lot of innings. Jordan Romano isn't going to get eight saves every 10 days. No. Right? He can't. The numbers that we've gotten from guys like Trent Thornton, I don't know what kind of wizardry he's doing if he made a deal with the devil this offseason. <laughs> Trent Thornton, I are don't. you a believer in Trent Thornton? Is this the real Trent Thornton or is this Chatwood before the sticky stuff? I don't I don't I'm know. That's exactly big, how I feel, Scott. I'm this not is... a big enough believer to say I'm a believer yet. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm I mean, thrilled. Hey, this look, if, great. I, if I get hit by a bus today and I go to the pearly gates and I get one question, it's a toss up between the manager answer and is right. and is Thornton for real. That might be my yeah. next question, right? So I well, don't you're know. You're very confident you're going to heaven. You're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for someone who's like not religious at all. Yeah. I don't know. It, it just turns out you're asking the devil yeah. about baseball. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> just tell me. <laughs> I've just like misconfused hell for heaven because there's some guy named Angel in an umpire yeah. costume. Sorry, yeah, Angel that's Hernandez. Right. It's a shot fired. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways. Yeah, I don't know what the right answer is, Scott, because I, I just... I mean, if we can get six plus innings out of our starters consistently, sure, this bullpen is sustainable. But we've already promoted well, nice, Ryu. Nice to from... see Barrios go eight last night. I mean, no, of course it was. I mean, it was nice yeah. to see uh, Gossman go eight and a half the other day too. Yeah. But we need that more often for me to believe that this is sustain. I just feel like these guys are going to get worn out. And whether that leads to injuries or whether that just leads to fatigue and a drop in velo or whatever the case may be. I mean, you know, the difference between a 94 and a 92 is a lot easier to hit, right? So these guys got to be fresh. And if we're overworking them, like that's bullpen management is going to be a big key over the next month. But I mean, you look up and down baseball. You just need to look at the numbers month to month to realize that no bullpen in baseball is unhittable or can't get got to there's there's ebbs and flows in every portion of the game and of course that extends to the bullpen and i think we've seen the bullpen really get some wins for this team in the first yeah. 16 games of the season and i think we're going to need to later on in the season when maybe the bullpen is faltering a little bit we're going to need to see the starting rotation step up we're going to need to see the offense step up because those are two portions of this team who have yet to really show consistency and and the hope that we had originally had right especially on the offensive end of things although uh nice to see Bo finally kind of break out of his slump yesterday though that was great yeah well yeah big grand slam for Bo Bichette mm -hmm. uh one thing we talked about on Sunday was is his defense hurting his bat or is his bat hurting his defense right i know those two i think he's go just hand lacking hand, confidence but... right like he's 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 gripping really tough on the bat and he's i don't know the I, ball players man it's i know they they're, get in their head finicky. that slumps and hot streaks and yeah well he busted out of that that slump at the best possible time yesterday uh Four run shot, grand slam, as they're sometimes referred to. Mm -hmm. um, 
took the 6-2 lead against the Red Sox. And boy, did we need it because... So for those of you on audio, (laughs) (laughs) Adam just sneezed there, but he was very quick on that mute button. Very impressive. Whereas everyone on YouTube knew exactly what was going on. I was just going to say, uh, you you think the people on YouTube were aware of what just happened there without the explanation? Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, Bo Bichette, big hit, big win against the Red Sox last night. Mm-hmm. Um, 6-2. That was, uh, yeah, big win. Was that their Eovoldi start for the Red Sox? Um, Who was their starting pitcher last night? Ooh, I think that was question. that was our toughest matchup. I think of the four. Yeah. Um, I watched it at the bar, so I. Uh... No, it was it was. Uh... No, that's their reliever. Who was the starter? This is just good radio, is what. This is this is the best right now. I should just go back to sneezing. Yeah, it was Avaldi. Avaldi. Okay, so Avaldi Barrios. We have obviously had the question mark for Barrios, despite um, everybody's confidence in him. Uh, um, but Barrios went eight. It was good. I think we're, we should be in line for potentially a sweep of this series now. Like, I mean, I, I wanted three out of four coming in, and I thought that last night's game was going to be our toughest one to win. So. I don't know. How are you no, feeling? No, you're right. Like, I, I agree. I think um, tonight we've got... Uh, it's Gossman for us. It's Gossman. And it's Whitlock for them. No, sorry. It's Pavetta for them. Canadian uh, kid. Canadian kid. Nick Pavetta. And then we've got Ross Stripling versus Michael Waka. Yes. And then it's Alec Manoa versus Garrett Whitlock. Um, that is in place of Hauk, who is uh, mm-hmm. unvaccinated and not allowed in Canada. So, yeah, I want four out of four in this series. Um, I want it. I know we're going to take our splits and we're going to take our wins when we can, but I don't know. I mean, three Am I getting four, greedy here? I think you are, personally. <sighs> I think you are getting a little greedy. Yeah. I, I'm all for even a split is fine but uh, yeah i mean obviously three or four would be fantastic here and i think that now that you're down to the final three games yeah taken to a three that's doable yeah all right so three out of four let's go with that uh blue jays sitting at 11 and six top of the al east right now got to be happy with that right for sure okay especially with the schedule they've had so far it's been been insane very good teams yes um all right, so then in Discord, we had uh, some conversations about Zach Collins. Yes, so, I saw that. Ian posted uh, MLB percentile rankings. Uh, man, is that a nerdy sentence? Uh, <laughs> some of you may have seen these. Uh, it's basically the graph that shows like the chart of like average and top end Max. of the league for like exit velo, exit velo. and everything like this right strikeout rate, rate walk strikeout. rate all this stuff yes and uh zach collins is actually putting up some pretty good numbers so we had uh moisey got bands asked if uh you guys think this is legit from zach collins um so ian who posted the percentages in the first place says he's not uh not going that far yet doesn't know if it's legit but starting to take a longer look with that. Sorry, with that in mind. How are you feeling about Zach Collins, Scott? He's done everything we could possibly ask him to do. I mean, as of a backup catcher who is kind of thrust, our number three catcher, by the way, who is thrust into an almost everyday role where we're seeing either catching or in that DH position. He's showing power. He's come up with some really big hits. And like Ian said in Discord, when you show the numbers, they are legit, right? So that does give you a little bit of confidence that this is sustainable in some fashion. You know, like his exit velo really is above average. He really is barreling up the ball at a rate that should 
show some consistency. But I'm also with, you know, Boise Got Bands is like, <laughs> is this guy, like, is this actually legit? It, time will tell. It's still early in the season. We're 16 games in here, 17 games in. We'll see. But in the for a guy like Zach Collins, you take everything he gives you, right? Yep. And you just thank the baseball gods that for whatever reason. Because the truth is, man, let's let's be very honest. And I, I have nothing but uh, well wishes for Reese McGuire. But Reese McGuire would not be putting up the numbers that Zach Collins is right well, now. Well, I mean, over that. a 17-game sample, we saw three-week stretches last year where Reese McGuire looked great. Not the power, though. He didn't have the power. But right, I agree not, with you. Yes. Not the power, sure. Um, I mean, again, not to go back to long toss on Sunday. I know you missed it. Um, but, like, Moreno continues to put up big numbers in AAA. Yes. yes right? When we talk to people smarter than us, namely Jeff Blair. Yeah. He feels like, yeah, Moreno's probably going to get called up soon. Probably in May. Like, it again provided he continues to hit the way he's hitting right that's that's the the world we have to play in when we're looking into this crystal ball but let's assume that he continues to play this way bring him up right so we're not going to carry Which four catchers be... especially past contracted uh rosters right so we're about a week away a little less than a week away from going from 28 man roster down to 26 so we're already going to lose two people we're not having four catchers on a 26-man roster. That's insanity. No. Yeah. So... Do they carry three catchers with a 26-man roster? Because you look at a 28-man roster and uh, with it going to 26, I feel like it's got to be one bullpen arm and then the third catcher's gone. But how do you... How would you play that? Like, the, well, is that kind of the logical... Well, when we talked it out on Sunday, here's... Here's kind of the consensus summarized for anybody that missed it, including yourself. Danny Jansen gets off the IL. He's healthy. He's our quote-unquote everyday catcher. He's catching four-plus games a week. Yeah. Uh, Alejandro Kirk goes down to AAA. Okay. Needs to get the bat going. Needs to be a tradable piece. Needs to yes. get his regular, consistent at bats. Uh, Zach Collins is our other catcher, our sh- our second catcher, um, okay. catching one or two games a, a week. Right, he right. is the left-handed bat to mix into that lineup, and then Gabriel Moreno is our DH, everyday DH. Essentially, he catches almost no games. Yeah. Sprinkle him in for like 10 games over the course of the year just to kind of get okay. his feet wet. Sure. Right? Catching at the big league level. Just let him focus on being a big bat for us. Reevaluate the offseason. I don't mind season. that idea. Kind of a uh, Jordan Alvarez type exactly. of idea. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, okay. I like so, that. I don't mind that at all. Yeah. Especially when we came gonna... to that conclusion, I was like, they, that absolutely makes the most sense. That's. Yeah. That's what we got to do. Again, you know, provided everyone's healthy and provided that everything else is firing, provided that Zach Collins' bat doesn't just turn to an ice cube, right? Like, if he continues to hit the way he's hitting, yeah. Bless you. <laughs> I probably boy. just woke up my wife, who just worked a long night shift, so I'm really sorry oh. for that. But Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, I was thinking when I sneezed that first time. I'm like, usually I sneeze in threes, but two and three were just on a 15 minute delay today. Oh, there you go. All right. Um, next one comes in. This is uh, Duck Duck Jays DM'd us on Twitter and said, "Just finished watching the Danny Jansen interview. It was so great. Loved his Adam Jones story. The whole thing was a fun listen. Thanks, guys." Yeah. The Adam Jones story was actually great. If again, that's up right now on our full conversations in our on our YouTube and and on our uh, whatever podcast platform you follow. So feel free to take a listen there. But uh, yeah, that that 
Adam Jones story is so cool because it really shows like the full circleness of baseball, mm -hmm. uh, the minor league team, the A team that Danny Jansen followed as a kid. Adam Jones was actually like a billet at his place. And then full circle, you know, 10 yeah. years later or whatever, Danny's making his MLB debut and there's Adam Jones just slapping him on the chest being like, <laughs> hey, kid, you did it. <laughs> very cool. Very, yeah. very cool. Uh, yeah, a lot of good good stories there uh, from Danny Jansen. Uh, and lots of good questions from everybody in the Discord and, yes. and stuff like that. So Well done, uh, everybody. Thanks for helping us out there. Uh, Dulcimerist commented on the Danny Jansen interview as well. I said, thanks for the fun interview. I have a feeling the term bad tacos is about to catch on in the Blue Jays clubhouse as new slang. Uh, Danny that really was got a kick see. out of that term. I know how much he enjoyed that term. He loved it. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> uh, for anybody that's new here, bad tacos is the, uh, I guess, euphemism that we use for injuries to avoid jinxing players. Yes. Um, so... There you go. Uh, we still refer to someone who's injured as being injured when it is in past tense. It is purely yeah. st stupid stition that we uh, avoid throwing a jinx on someone. So yes. Um, all right, last one here of the day. This one comes in from Scott McCutcheon. He says, "I gotta say, another was, Scott, of another course, Scott. I gotta say, I was hesitant to join the Discord uh, just because I didn't want to have to learn another new platform." Uh, I know you were also reluctant to uh, get the Discord going. You thought, anyways. Sure was. Um, As an old dog, I hate new tricks, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> Here we are, rolling over. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, let me start this whole thing over. Just because I didn't want to have to learn a new platform, but I did it, and oh boy, was it worth it. I expected just a chat room, uh, but the way you guys have it set up and the efforts the members put in, Linking articles, videos, it's really well organized. It's like a total Blue Jays content hub. Just great. Uh, so thanks for that, Scott. Yeah, thanks, Scott. And honestly, thanks to we're I think we're up over a hundred we're pushing hundred and fifty members in Discord yeah. at this point. And I I do really wish to do a tip of the hat to everyone and like just say thank you. Because Discord is not just us by any means. In fact, yep. if anything, Adam, at this point, we're almost Pretty hands, hands off. off. Like yeah. everyone is kind of doing it themselves. And he, he really sums it up well there that it's like a hub of Blue Jays content because every single person who sees anything Blue Jays related is posting it or putting it up there. And all these in-depth discussions are happening on little things even like zach collins like we kind of brought up zach collins and like if you go into the discord under the blue jays uh Channel. pull out yeah there like the the category th yeah you need to scroll for like three pages of people just talking zach collins and like what everyone thinks about him and he's yeah, our cool. technically our third catcher <laughs> yeah there's uh so, quite a yeah. bit of deep dive um, I'll just run down some of the categories that we have here for anybody who is curious the way we've got it broken up. Like we do have a specific Blue Jays game day chat um, where, you know, there will be a dozen or two dozen people just chatting away through the game every day, right? Like, oh my God, did yeah. you see that play from Bo or whatever the case may be. Yeah. We have a separate category just for memes. We have stuff from the pod. So if you guys want to rag on me, not in the comment section. Um, that's the place to do it. Uh, we list all of our upcoming guests. We have a channel for that. We have a category for MLB The Show, if you're into video games. Um, There's the general for just MLB talk. There's yeah. long toss for the Sunday show. We have a, a video links section. Actually, we've renamed Danny's video links because yeah, because Danny's just Danny awesome. in China is just always it's on it. Insane. So any I like video it. link from John Boy or from ESPN or an interview on MLB Network that has any sort of Blue Jays relation at all, and Danny's throwing it in there. So yeah, really cool. It's uh, I mean, this is the largest community I've ever been a part of in my entire yeah, life that was not it's toxic. Really cool. Yeah. So it's not I, toxic. It's insane. It's I don't insane. even know how it's it's continues to grow and just 
everyone's buds and everyone's like even when there's arguments it's so respectful yeah. and like <laughs> you know yes. you read the comments like i understand you feel this way i respect that here's my take it's like yeah. what the hell is going on <laughs> like, <laughs> this isn't twitter <laughs> this isn't twitter that's exactly it yeah all right Maybe man cool. um so that's we'll the uh the there. discord um, yeah. Join it. There's a free link, whether you're listening to it on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the case may be. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link in the show notes as well. It is free to join. So by all means, come say hi. Um, anything else to add, Scott? Or Just that the Discord really is probably the best place to get your questions in for yeah. upcoming guests and stuff like that. I know that w when we interviewed Danny Jansen on Thursday, most of our listener questions came from Discord, and it's not that we're ignoring everyone else. It's just that's the hub where everyone is mm -hmm. laying it all down. So, again, if that's something that you wish to participate in a little bit more than maybe you have been able to, that's a great place to do so. Um, we'll leave it at that. You can follow us on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast. We always thank everyone who has DM'd us or tweeted right at us and – we like to get as much as that out there during our mailbags as we can. You can do the same thing on Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast. Appreciate all the likes, comments on YouTube. Of course, if you can hit subscribe if you haven't, we really appreciate it. All the best, everybody. We will uh, be doing our live stream tonight. I know we uh, said we were going to do it last week as well, and just we had some... Uh, I'll be honest. We just had some family stuff kind of pop up. I had some stuff on my end that just yeah. wasn't able to do it. And anyways, we're back at it tonight. So we'll see everybody for the game two of the Red Sox series. Cheers, gang. Cheers.